today on Dr. Phil. The doctor guilty of killing his wife. Prosecution say that McNeil's long-term affair was the motive. A lot of people are suspicious that you know more about this than you're telling. His mistress? You sent him seductive pictures the day after he buried his wife. Finally speaks out. You move in how long after her death? It was a couple of weeks. He said you were the nanny, but in fact, you were his lover. Yes. Hard questions. Did he ever give you any warning signs that he wanted to get rid of his wife? Did you ever meet Michelle? Did she know he was having an affair with you? Are you still in love with him? Shocking new revelations. He represented that you were married to him, and you used as your wedding date the day that his wife was buried. Let me explain this. A daytime exclusive. Did he invite you to her funeral? No, I wanted to give my respects. You disrespected her in life, but you wanted to pay your respects to her in death. When you're in love with someone, it's, it's very easy to be very delusional. And you see what you want to see, and you trust what you want to trust. Do you believe he is guilty, or do you believe he's innocent? I believe. The doctor, his wife, his mistress, the murder. It is a story worthy of a soap opera. A rich, handsome, charismatic doctor, an adoring, attentive beauty queen wife, and a mysterious mistress in the middle. But when Gypsy Willis met Dr. Martin McNeil, she never dreamed their real life affair would turn into a real life nightmare filled with lies, deceit, and murder. Take a look. A doctor accused of murdering his wife. A Pleasant Grove judge ordered Martin McNeil to stand trial for murder and obstruction of justice. Prosecutors say he gave his wife a lethal combination of drugs. Michelle was found dead in her bathtub while in Martin's care. It was horrifying. I mean, he killed my mother. He killed my mother. One major factor for the prosecution on this case, they say that McNeil's long-term affair with Gypsy Willis was the former doctor's motive for allegedly killing his wife. Willis testified she met Martin McNeil online in November 2005, and by January, the relationship had turned sexual. The affair continued until the day Michelle McNeil died. Are you familiar with what happened on April 11th of 2007? A little, yeah. Okay, what happened on that day? I understand that, um... Martin's wife was found collapsed. He, res he tried to resuscitate her. She was taken to the hospital, coded, and then passed away. Willis testified she attended Michelle's funeral and spoke in person with Martin. I spoke to him briefly after and just said, I hope you're all right, and if there's anything I can do, please let me know. Her testimony helped seal his fate. The jury deliberated for 11 hours before finding McNeil guilty for killing his wife, Michelle. We're just so happy he can't hurt anyone else. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, everyone uh, knows this story, and everyone thinks that you were involved, which, of course, you were involved in some way, but you say you were not involved in any way with the death of this woman, right? That's correct. I mean, I want to give you a chance to say that right straight up front. Absolutely. All right. But, um, but you were involved because you were involved with her husband. Yes. And you had been for how long of a period of time? Um, about, uh, it was a little over a year. It was about 15 months, I, I think. Okay. And tell me what is it you want people to know, just right off the top, why you want to be here and what it is you want people to know about you. The portrayal of the media has <clears throat> been very, very harsh. It has been very hard. I never signed up for this, and I am a real person, and, you know, I've made mistakes, and I'm sorry for them. I guess I would, I would say, you know, um, try not to judge unless you have been in similar circumstances, and so you have some sort of personal insight into it. It is, it's been a very, very hard, hard time. Hard experience, hard lessons learned. What is it that's been said about you that isn't true? You, you were his mistress. I was. And the truth is that even the most naive observer would have to consider that you were potentially an incentive for him to kill his wife, which a jury just found him guilty of. 
Yeah. The jury find the defendant as to count one murder guilty. <laughs> the idea that I was incentive is appalling to me, and it's very hard to swallow. But you have to understand, yeah. I he do meets understand. you, takes up with you, is now convicted of killing her, and you move in how long after her death? It was a couple of weeks. And when you moved in, there was a deception to the family members, right? Because he said you were the nanny? Yes. But in fact, you were his lover? I had been, yes. Okay. So you understand. I th understand. Those yeah. things are, are that, those are just the facts. And one could then conclude that you were an incentive to this. And I think it is a huge leap to say, therefore, you were involved in her death and you helped plan it or you did anything. I'm, I don't mean to imply that at all. That would be a huge leap. But you do have to understand, I understand. if his mind was demented enough that he needed her out of the way to have full time with you, that then you were an incentive to him in, in, his, in his world. It could have been the case. Yes. Let me fast forward to the day that you found out that his wife was dead. How did you find that out? He sent me a text. And I was, uh, I was in the car with a friend of mine up in Salt Lake. And um, he, it was a very vague text. And I, and I didn't know what he meant. And I was being flippant. And I made a joke after. And, and the text was basically, I, I've lost her. Something like that. And, and you joked back, would she walk away or walk off? or? It was something, yeah, something, something to that effect. You didn't know when he said lost. I had no dead. idea. No idea. I was, I was shocked. And what did he say in the next text? Um, he clarified the first text that she had actually, in fact, passed away. And I was, I, my, my response was, I am so sorry. <clears throat> I'm, I'm horrified. If there's anything I can help you with, please let me know. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Did he ever, in retrospect, did he ever give you any warning signs that he wanted to get rid of his wife, Michelle? No. No, there was nothing like that. Even in retrospect? Even in retrospect. That's, um, that's why it's been so hard in the last week to, to hear the, the verdict and to, um, to have been, you know, um, to have known him then. And to, to have seen how things progressed, it has been very hard to see that because I just, I never imagined at all, not in my wildest dreams. <clears throat> As you sit here today, do you believe he is guilty or do you believe he's innocent? I met him online. Did he tell you then that he was married? It was a little while after I'd actually met him. Did that bother you at all that I'm sleeping with someone else's husband? And later, did he invite you to her funeral? No, I wanted to go and, and pay my respects, show support for him. You sent him seductive pictures the day after he buried his wife. Michelle McNeil was found dead in her bathtub in April 2007. Prosecutors say her husband, Martin, gave her a dangerous combination of drugs after undergoing plastic surgery. They say that McNeil's long-term affair with Gypsy Willis was the former doctor's motive for allegedly killing his wife. It was a circumstantial case, but in the end, prosecutors convinced the jury that McNeil did it. Mr. McNeil, if you will stand, please. Tension filled the courtroom as the court clerk read the verdict. The jury, having reviewed the evidence and testimony in the case, find the defendant as to count one murder guilty. I can't believe this has finally happened. We're so, we're so grateful. As you sit here today, do you believe he is guilty or do you believe he's innocent? Um, you know, the jury came back and they said that he's guilty. And I have to respect the jury. I believe that they made a decision based on emotion. I, I believe he did not kill Michelle. You, you think that it was an accidental death? I, uh, I do. I think it was a natural death. OK. All right. All right now let me back up a little bit. How, di how did you meet him? I met him online in 2005. And so then you met in the real world? Yes. 
and you hit it off. Yes. Did he tell you then that he was married, or did he let you think he was single? Uh, it was it was a little while after I'd actually met him, I believe. That he f confessed to you that had you been so. intimate with him at that point? No. Uh, so when you started having an affair with him, when you started having intimate relations with him, you knew he was married. Yes. And did that bother you at all that I'm sleeping with someone else's husband? I'm an interloper here. My my mindset back then. And, and I realize it is not the best. I had been married once. I looked around me, and I did not see marriage working out for too many people. And so my attitude towards that was, if someone else is married, that is their responsibility, that is their life, it is completely separate from me. And I have come to see that that attitude has caused a lot of, a lot of pain in a lot of people, and it was never intended to be. Did he talk to you about his marriage? A little. Did he love his wife? He said he loved his wife, and she was a perfect wife, and he had a perfect family. Did she know he was having an affair with you? I don't think so. You don't think that ever came up? I don't, I don't think that ever came up. Mm -hmm. Did he ever mention to you about divorcing his wife and being with you? No, no. There was, there was never any serious conversation like that at all. I mean, there, there were a period, I, I, was, I was kind of the escape, I felt. So he would, <clears throat> he would come and see me and we would, we would you know, enjoy our time together. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I was the escape. And so, you know, just in passing, you know, there were, there were moments of frustration in his life. But it was not something we really delved into and there was never any serious conversation like that at all. One of his daughters had said that days before her death that they had been fighting about an affair. You didn't know that. I didn't know about any of that. And I don't know that that's true. According to a search warrant, uh, an affidavit in 2004, it said that you told your then roommates that you wanted to get rid of Michelle. These particular roommates that um, came forward had moved out of my home more than a year before I ever met Martin. I, I believe that they wanted attention. I believe that they saw a lot of things in the media and they said they saw a picture of his wife in your room. That is a totally impossible. Right. Did you ever make reference to cutting her brake lines? I never said that to anyone Did about anything. Did you ever anything. make reference to giving her undetectable medications? No. Okay. No. Um, and specifically to those roommates, it was, it's not possible. Right. Did you ever meet Michelle? No. Um, I knew who she was, but I never, never went there. Did he invite you to her funeral? No, he didn't invite me. I, I wanted to go and, and pay my respects. But you understand how that sounds to people because you disrespected her in life, but you wanted to pay your respects to her in death. I, I felt sorry. I felt sorry that I had been involved. Um, inappropriately before it was a possibility. Um, I knew that he had really respected her. Um, she had held his world together. I was so sorry for his family. And no one knew who I was. I didn't, I didn't think anyone would ever know. I just wanted to go and you know, pay my respects to Michelle and, and tell Martin I hoped he was all right. Show support for him. Now, according to court documents, there was an assertion that you texted him 30 times that day, not the day of the funeral, but oh, of her of death. death. D did you? I, I don't know the exact number. It was until somewhere in the hour of 4 p.m. It was a day like any other day. And so our routine would just be to, you know, to contact each other when there was time and we felt inclined mm -hmm. to. Did you text him twice during the funeral? Um, I did. During the actual service? I, I think so, something like that. And he replied after the funeral was over. You sent him seductive pictures the day after he buried his wife. True? They were, they were pretty tame. But yes, there were photos that were sent. These were <clears throat> private pictures yes. that you sent at the time. Why did you do that? I wanted to distract him from his grief, and I wanted him to still think of me, even, you know, during this time that was was so hard for everyone. It 
there is no way to go through this and sound good. I am sorry. Well, but I want to give you a chance to explain it. You move in nine days after he buries this woman into her house, right? Yes. Why? Why? Um, Martin and his family were in, in deep chaos, and, um, you know, I, my background was nursing. I'd been a nurse for about 12 years. Um, I thought I could help. A daughter of Dr. Martin McNeil testifies against her father, relating what happened the day her mother died and how her father tried to convince her to hire a nanny. My father was uh, adamant that we go to the temple to pray about getting a nanny. And do you know when your father talked about going to the temple and praying about it? It was right away, um, very soon after my mother's death. How did his children react? Well, his oldest daughter had been there trying to help, and uh, there had been some, some personality conflict, and, um, and uh, he, needed, he needed different help. And so, it doesn't sound right, I'm sorry. And so, we'll take, take a breath, and uh, we'll, we'll take a break. Why did Gypsy and Martin end up behind bars after his wife's death? Both of them. We'll be right back. He wanted to add me to the accounts under his daughter's social security number. In these documents, you represented that you were married to him. Yes. And you used as your wedding date the day that his wife was buried. Prosecutor Chad Grunander pointed to Gypsy Willis as the motive, saying their affair became more intense just a month before Michelle's death and that McNeil had a, quote, cold and calculated plan to kill Michelle and bring Gypsy into the home under the guise of being the nanny. Well, Gypsy Willis found herself at the center of a firestorm when the man she was having an affair with, a prominent doctor in Utah, was convicted of murdering his wife. Gypsy was called as a hostile witness in the case, and many say she not only tried to protect him on the stand, but that she was the real reason for Michelle McNeil's death. She finds that idea appalling as, as she looks at it now. You move in as a nanny, yes. right? That was... That was the way they, I was portrayed to the family and neighborhood. My dad called me on the phone and said, Alexis, I've found the perfect nanny. Dad, Gypsy Jillian Willis, I know that woman. I know mom was worried you were having an affair with her and you're not to bring her into this home. And how did he respond? Oh, he got irate. He was screaming at me, saying, how dare you? How dare you accuse me? You know, and hung up on me. Okay, and, and you and he, of course, knew that you were a lot more than a nanny. Yes. That you had a, a separate relationship with him. Did the kids suspect that there was more going on when um, you first moved in? No, not, not when I first moved in. I have heard now that, that they have, or they did, perhaps, okay. but not at the time. Now, you actually wound up in trouble yourself Correct? That's correct. And you wound up in jail? I did. For how long? It was about a year and a half. About a year and a half? I believe. Okay. And you and Martin were arrested for identity theft, correct? That's correct. Now, this is after Michelle's death? Yes. Okay. Tell me what happened. How did that all come about? When Martin and I got together, uh, I had significant debt. It was uh, tax debt and um, education debt, some other things. Um, he was concerned about adding me to the bank accounts under my information for fear that the money were seized for my debts. And so what I was told, I mean, this was um, temporarily until, until the house sold and my debts were paid, he wanted to add me just to give me access to the accounts under his daughter's social security number. Okay. So he has a daughter named... Giselle. Giselle, okay. Now, Giselle is out of the country. This is true. And he says, okay, she's away. 
So he says, we'll just use her name and her social security number. Yes. He said that as long as, um, you know, one, people wouldn't notice. Two, we were just doing it to grant me access to the account. And um, there was no, no injury to Giselle. You know, there was no way any, um, anything bad would happen. Okay. Um, so let me get this right. This was basically to defraud the government out of taxes. They, they, he didn't want to say who you were if you were on an account because they could then seize your account. They could seize the account. And he, it wasn't to defraud them. It was to pay them when we had the, um, the, the money to do so. It was, it was about $70,000. So, so you had the money to do so in the account, or he wouldn't have worried about it being seized. He didn't want them to come get their 70000 out of that account. Right then. That's correct. Okay. So this was to not let the government know that you now had access to money. Yes. For, the, for a short time, that was okay. How that is was that fun. not fraud? How, and I don't mean that in a legal sense, but you're hiding from the government that you have access to money that you owe them. I see what you're saying. I mean, is that... I, I, I'm just trying to simplify this so I understand. Okay. Uh, he had the money in the account. Right. He did not feel that his, his finances could bear the burden of a 70000 draw right then. And so, like I said, temporarily, this is the plan, temporarily until the house sold. Debts were paid. Um, it was to grant me access to the account. Okay. And, you, and, and then in these documents, you represented that you were married to him. Yes. Correct? And on these documents, you used as your wedding date the day that his wife was buried. If, in fact, he did murder her, and then he was going to come to me, did it ever occur to you, you know, I might be getting into a situation here that has a real bad end? documents you represented that you were married to him yes correct and on these documents you used as your wedding date the day that his wife was buried okay let me explain this let me explain this the entire situation was terribly uncomfortable to me I did not think it was a good idea that I use anyone's social um, he thought that the easiest way to do this, though, would be to go onto the base and correct their information and have them issue me a card. And I was too scared to do it. I stayed in the car, and I said, if you want to go and arrange this, you can go and try. If you talk them into it, they can take my picture, that's fine. But I'm, I don't think this is a good idea. And he, in his, in his boldness, did that and um, called me from the, um, from the office with the documents already filled out. Mm -hmm. or the information part, portion. How long after this did he actually propose to you? He proposed, uh, I think it was like the end of July, first part of August. Mm -hmm. Which was how long after the funeral? Um, three or four months. Not long. Why use the funeral date on falsified documents as your wedding date? Martin had been battling with his children. And um, again, it was, it's unlikely that they had, or to our minds then, it was unlikely that anyone would see that. But if they did, it would hurt their feelings. And that's why he put it the way he did. How did he propose? Um, we went to visit my family in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And we went to a restaurant. And he had, he had the ring, and he had flowers. And we had a great dinner, and then he proposed in front of my family. Were you planning to marry him? Uh, yes, yes, I did plan to marry him. You Eventually, said yes. yes. Did you have any doubts about marrying him? Not about marrying him. I had, I had you know, doubts about marriage in general. Have you ever heard the name Drew Peterson? Drew, who? He's been convicted of murdering his wife, and then another wife disappeared after that, and oh. then. Did it ever occur to you, you know, I might be getting into a situation here that has a real bad end? 
Did it ever occur to you? I, I never felt that my life was in danger at all. I, um, the facts around Michelle's death and the autopsy was natural. Um, in hindsight, especially, it, it is, it is um, I, I, don't, I can't believe I did the things I did. Um, Martin was an attorney. He was, he was appointed by the governor to work in the position he had been. He had his law degree. Um, I knew he liked, he liked bending the rules, and um, I thought that he knew how to navigate however he wanted to. And so I deferred my better judgment to what he said we should do. And it has been disastrous. It's been disastrous in everyone's life. He claimed to have cancer, which is part of the reason that he said he couldn't get Michelle out of the bathtub and why he's been seen on a cane and one thing and another. Did he have cancer? He did not have cancer. He had an injury uh, in 2005 that was not healing, or excuse me, 2006, that wasn't healing properly. It's a genetic disease called uh, HNPP. At the time of trial, the prosecution called another mistress yes. to testify. Did you know about her? He had, he had told me about her, um, kind of in passing during the time that we were, we were involved. So you knew you weren't the only one? I, I knew I wasn't the only one. I, I assumed he probably had many. Is there any such thing as a discontinuation criteria for you? Wife dies, you're sending him pictures the day after, you're moving into her house, you're, you're stealing an identity, defrauding the government, not once but twice. Um, is there... It's a very damning situation. Is there any point at which you would have said, this is too much? I, I, I'm out of here. When was the last time you talked to him? At the federal building in February of 2009. And he said, I still love you. Are you still in love with him? Willis read excerpts of love letter after love letter she exchanged with McNeil while they were both in federal prison. What does he say right here? I love you, sweetheart, and we'll write again soon. Despite the sentiments in the letters, Willis testified she was scared of reuniting with McNeil after prison. And isn't it true that you told investigators that you could not see yourself being with Martin any further and the idea of being with him terrified you? I found myself in prison for two years as a result of being with this guy, and that was terrifying to me. Is there any point at which you would have said, this is too much. I, I, I'm out of here. Well, he did. He threw me in prison, and that was enough. That's what that was. How did he throw you in prison? Well, I had done all of the things that he'd asked me to do, believing that he knew what, what, was, what was going to be all right. Okay, and, and you said, look, he's, he said to you, which one of us has a law degree, right? But you don't need a law degree to know, know. that using someone else's identity using someone else's social security number to evade getting on the radar screen of the government when you now have access to money or for any other reason. You don't need a law degree to know that that is a crime. I do. I know. So you... We argued about that. Um, I did question him, and I, and I thought, again, I, you know, love is blind. I, I thought he knew best. You cut a deal for some modified immunity to testify against him at trial, correct? Modified immunity. Did you make a deal with the prosecutors? To testify? Yes. Um, the, the deal that I made with the state of Utah was that um, when they brought state charges for the same activity that we had done federally, um, because they're considered separate courts, so they can right. charge you both ways, um, rather than, than doing another state sentence, one of the criteria was that I would be, would be willing to testify against Martin in, in any legal um, situations that might come up. At that point, there were no charges filed. Did you testify against him at trial? I did. And what was the most damning thing that you testified about? I, our relationship was the damning situation there. 
which brings us full circle back to you became motive. That's what they say. The prosecution said when you put pieces of the puzzle together and take a step back, it's easy to see the big picture. Martin's secret life with Gypsy Willis was beginning to intersect with his life with Michelle. He was going to have to make a choice between Michelle or Gypsy. I have a hard time with that, Dr. Phil. I understand. But they used you as motive. They used me as motive, yes. They said you, because he was involved with you, in love with you, yes. he needed to get rid of her. That's and what that was said. his motive. And this surgery that she went through was his opportunity. And so they've got motive and opportunity, and he's been convicted. Whose decision was it to send his 16-year-old daughter Giselle out of the country and back to the Ukraine? I think it was a, a family decision, actually. Um, in the year prior to Michelle's passing, they had found a living sister in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so they had been corresponding back and forth, and mm -hmm. Giselle wanted to go live with her sister. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was considerable time before Michelle's passing that they had made these arrangements. Right, but, but, and, and the reports say that once she got there, she couldn't get back home. When she got there, Martin had doubled the family's income, and he spoke to her um, frequently, at least once a week. Did she have any idea that you had stolen her identity? Uh, no. Because it just seems beyond coincidental that she gets shipped off, you I take her identity, and that it seems like he got rid of two. Killed his wife and shipped his daughter. You took her identity and moved into his wife's house. Well, not in that order. It was, it, I mean, we, it, we thought about this after the fact, yeah, after all these things. You, you, you understand there's a, <laughs> there is a pattern. Here. Yes, I understand, and it looks awful. And I'm sorry. Yeah. When was the last time you, you talked to him? At the federal building in, um, I think it was February of 2009. And, and he said, I'm so sorry. And I never intended this, and, you know, still love you. That's what he said. Are you still in love with him? How in your fondest mind did you ever think this man would be loyal to you when he's cheated on everybody else that's ever been in his life? He explained to a final witness that he can get away with things and stated that one of the things he had gotten away with was killing his wife. Martin McNeil shook his head in disgust as prosecutors told the jury that one of his former cellmates will testify that he admitted to killing his wife, Michelle. Prosecutors allege he contacted Willis twice on the morning of his wife's death and that on the day of Michelle's funeral, the two exchanged 20 text messages. Willis was hired as the nanny and the two became engaged three months later. Are you still in love with him? No. There's, there's a part of me that will always care for Martin. Um, we had, we had a deep connection, but um, I'm not in love with him now. Mm -hmm. I care for him. I hope he's all right. I mean, I have, I have thoughts of him, you know, but I, I'm not in love with him now. But you realize there is more than just a possibility that he killed his wife. I mean, he has been convicted of it. He has been convicted, yes. A, a very good friend of mine and a good friend of the show is here, former FBI profiler and NBC criminal analyst, Clint Van Zant. Uh, Clint, um, there are, you and I have worked on yeah. cases before. In fact, we've talked about some cases that have an eerie parallel to what's going on here that I think she may not be aware of. Yeah. Enlighten us. Yeah, you know, Gypsy, what Dr. Phil was making reference to, you may recall that you think about it, a Chicago area police officer by the name of Drew Peterson was married four different times and each wife and then he had then he was dating outside the marriage and he had another wife and another wife well wife number three wind up wound up being drowned in a bathtub while she was clothed okay and then wife number four when she was planning on moving out of her husband she disappeared she's never been seen again and I guess my challenge in listening to this exchange you've got a man who cheated on his wife multiple times with multiple women he cheated on his children. What, eight children? Yes. He, yeah, he cheated on all of his children. He cheated on the government. How 
how in your fondest mind did you ever think this man would be loyal to you when he's cheated on everybody else that's ever been in his life? Good question. Um, I guess I guess I loved him so much. I hoped and I thought that um, I, I think I think when you're in love with someone, it's it's very easy to be get to to get very delusional, and you see what you want to see, and you trust what you want to trust, and. Um, You know, sorry. Did he chew you up and spit you out? He betrayed all of us, all of our trust, all of us, even me. I, he, he's destroyed my life. But even so, I, you know, having been there and looking at the facts and being very analytical, it's hard for me to accept. This may be a very expensive education here. <laughs> it has been. But it, it, it's really expensive if you really don't learn anything from it. That's why I said, is there any point here at which you would go, that's enough? By God, no. Okay, so you're married. You didn't tell me that right away. I learned it and stayed in it. Shouldn't have. Uh, then you want me to steal somebody's identity, use another social security number. I'm not paying the government. I mean, it, it, it just, he just continues to do things that seem very sociopathic to me. I, I just very sociopathic to me in terms of no conscience and, you know, picking your wedding date as the funeral date. Yep. And I mean, things like that just, to me, are just so narcissistic and sociopathic. And you blew right by them. And you got to learn from that. Oh, yeah. Many lessons learned, I promise. A lot of people are suspicious that you know more about this than you're telling, that you were actually involved in this. If he reaches out to you from prison, do you respond? You know, I, I had a coach tell me one time, in college, he said, McGraw, you are the dumbest smart person I've ever met. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that about you. And a lot of people are suspicious that you know more about this than you're telling, that you either knew what was happening and like other things, you just went along because you thought he knew best. There are those who think you were actually involved in this and that you helped to plan it and it all worked out exactly the way it was. I'm not one of those people, and I'll tell you the primary reason that I don't think that is because I do think, based on what his personality seems to be to me, that he would have burned you to save himself if he could have. And the only reason that, I mean, to me, uh, if he had a chance to throw you under the bus to trade himself to a lesser charge or a better deal or some type of leniency, that he probably would have. So, you know, that's one of the reasons I, I tend to come down on the side that maybe you're just like me, one of the dumbest smart people ever around because you sure are smart in some ways and <laughs> really dumb in some others. I could have uh, told you that, Dr. <clears throat> Phil. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, Gypsy, I, I appreciate your candor. Yeah. Uh, in coming here. Um, is there anything else you want to say uh, before, you, before you go? Um, you know, I, I believe that it has not been taken sincerely when I have said it in the past. But I, honestly, I am so sorry for any part I played in anyone's pain as a result of this. I was more selfish back then. I did not have the proper perspectives on what was, what was an appropriate way of living and um, you know my family his family it has been tragic for everyone if he reaches out to you from prison will you respond no okay. 
I don't plan to. Well, again, I, I appreciate your candor here. I, I hope I've been fair with you here and let you answer the questions. Have I been fair I with you so. here? Yeah. All right, well, thank you thank very you. much. Um, also want to give a, a special thanks to Clint Van Zant. He is always so interesting and helps us so much here. So Clint, thank you for all your work. Uh, for more information on today's show, please go to drphil.com. So long. Thanks, Jeff.